We noted Hebrews chapter 2, verse number 1, the writer said, Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by those that heard Him, God bearing them witness both with signs and wonders, and divers miracles of the Holy Ghost according to His own will. We noted the phrase this morning, how shall we escape? And we looked at the importance of the word neglect. To treat something that is very important as if it were something common. To treat our salvation as if it were something that were not so important when it is the most important thing in our entire existence. I want us to ask the question tonight, how can we neglect our salvation? Just how can that be done? And we're going to allow the Hebrew writer to tell us through his book, he's going to tell us throughout his book, how salvation can be Neglected. What must I do to be lost? What does an individual have to do to be lost in eternity? Nothing. Simply do nothing about your salvation. Simply ignore it. Get so involved with this this world and its activities that you just do nothing about spiritual things. And you'll be lost for all of eternity. How can a person neglect their salvation? Well, first of all, he makes it clear in chapter 2, verse 1, by not paying attention to this new revelation of God that He sent to us by His own Son. The argument is very logical. If people under the Old Testament times, if their disobedience, if that law was so steadfast that their disobedience to that law had severe penalties, then what is going to happen to us? If we have the law given by God's Son, if we neglect that great salvation, How much greater is going to be the penalty for us? If those in the Old Testament times were severely punished by disobeying God's Word, what about those of us today who disregard the Word of God today given by His own Son? What's going to happen to us? That's the logic that is behind chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. If you can see what happened to them in the Old Testament under the law that was given by angels, then what do you think is going to happen to us under the new dispensation, given this new law, given by God's own Son, if we neglect that salvation? In chapter 2, verse number 1 through 4, that's what he's talking about. We neglect our salvation by not listening to this revelation. Chapter 3, verse 7 and 8, he compares living in the Christian age to the time when God's people were wandering in the wilderness. As the Holy Spirit says, today, Hebrews 3, verse 7, Today, if you will hear His voice, do not harden your hearts. As those people did in the wilderness wanderings, they hardened their hearts against the Word of God and were severely penalized and had a severe punishment from God. And what was their great crime? When God spoke to them, they did not Listen. Same thing in verse number 15. 
chapter 3, verse 15. Today, if you will hear His voice, do not harden your heart. As in the provocation. That's talking about the time in the wilderness when God spoke and they wouldn't listen. They provoked God to anger. That's why it says, as in the provocation. Chapter 4, verse 7 tells us the same thing. Hebrews 4, verse 7. You remember chapter 10 and verse number 28? Hebrews 10, verse 28. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses how much sore punishment shall he be thought worthy who has trodden underfoot the Son of God and has counted the blood of the covenant whereby he was sanctified, an unholy thing, and done despite under the Spirit of grace. And then he makes it clear. God's made it clear. Old and New Testament. Vengeance is mine. I will repay, thus saith the Lord. The Lord will judge His people. Then He said it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. If people under the Old Testament law had to forfeit their lives, they had to give their existence on this earth because they would not listen carefully to God's law. Then his point in chapter 10, verse 29, how much worse is it going to be for us? God's given this law not through angels, but through His own Son. If we neglect it, if we don't listen to it, he said, you're putting the Son of God under your feet. The blood of the... The covenant whereby you were sanctified. You are counting it as an unholy thing. It doesn't mean anything to you. It's not important. It's not vital in your life. How are we going to escape that? And then it reminds us. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. So the first way he makes it clear we neglect our salvation is by not listening to the new covenant of Jesus Christ. Whether we just make excuses for our behavior, or we just simply don't pay any attention to it, or we just say, I do the best I can, and we just ignore what the new law says for us to do, he says it's going to be a horrible punishment. It's not going to be something we're just going to walk away from. We neglect our salvation when we do not listen carefully to the Word of God that is presented to us in the New Covenant. Chapter 4, verse 2. How do we neglect our salvation? He goes back to the children in the wilderness and he said they had the Gospel preached to them They had good news preached to them in Hebrews 4 verse 2. The people in the Old Testament in the wilderness, they had good news preached to them. Said it didn't do them any good. Did not profit them. Why didn't it profit them? Said because they didn't mix it with faith. How do we neglect our salvation? By not having proper faith in the Word of God like these people in Hebrews 4 verse 2, and that simply meant when they heard the Word of God, they didn't do what it said. Regardless of their excuses, they didn't do what God said, and He said that's a lack of faith. That's a lack of faith in the Word of God. We neglect our salvation. When we do not spend time in the Word of God. Hebrews 4, verse 12. The Word of God is quick. That means living. And powerful. And sharper than any two-edged sword. 
dividing asunder even to the joints and the marrow and the soul and the spirit and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. How powerful is this word that's been given to us by God's own Son. What a wondrous blessing we have. The very Son of the living God has given us this new covenant. And this word is is filled with life and power. That's what the word means in Hebrews 4.12. The word of God is quick. That means alive. It's living. The word quick in the King James translation of the Bible means alive. The word powerful in verse 12 means it will do what God wants it to do. We don't have a, have a special direct operation. His Word is powerful enough to do what God wants it to do. Isaiah 55, 8-11 makes it clear. His Word will do what God has sent it to do. We don't have to wonder about it. We neglect our salvation when we don't spend time with this Word. Television programs? Entertainment? Anything and everything can come before studying the Bible. Anything and everything can come before spending time every day in the Word of the living God. We put all other things ahead of that. That's neglecting our salvation. This Word that we have from God is powerful. Romans 1.16 I'm not ashamed of the Gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation. Romans 10.17 Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the Word of God. It upbuilds our faith. It makes us stronger. But when we neglect it for these physical things, We are neglecting our salvation. How do you neglect your salvation? Chapter 5, verse 11. He's talking about Jesus, says, of whom we have many things to say. He said, they're hard to say. Hard to be uttered, saying that you are dull of hearing. When for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and has become as such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. We neglect our salvation when we do not grow in Christ. When we are not growing spiritually, whatever the reason, we are neglecting our salvation. 2 Peter 3.18 Grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Are you growing in your knowledge of the Bible or is it about the same as it was last year? And maybe even the year before. Are you growing in your knowledge of God's will, of God's Word? If you're not growing, you are neglecting your salvation. And how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Chapter 6, verse 1, he tells these brethren, you need to move on. You need to grow. What happens when people just don't grow? Chapter 6, verse 4 through 6. They reach the point, Hebrews 6, 4 through 6, in which is impossible to renew them again under repentance. When you stop growing as a Christian, that's a very serious thing. Because you can reach the point in Hebrews 6, 4 through 6, when you'll never, you'll never come back to God. You can reach the point it's impossible to repent. And that all begins when you stop growing. Are you satisfied with your Christian life? Are you satisfied with your present knowledge of the Bible? Then you're in a very dangerous condition. Let us never be satisfied.
Let us always be willing to grow and mature in our knowledge of the Word of God and in understanding the will of God and in living that will and in improving our lives. Are you growing in Christian charity? Are you growing in Christian love? Are you just remaining the same? Are you becoming more like Jesus every day that you live? That's what Christianity is all about. It's the most dynamic religion ever offered to man. And we need to grow every day more like the Lord. 2 Corinthians 3.18 We behold as in the mirror the image of the Lord and we are changed into the same image. That takes growth. We are neglecting our salvation when we do not grow spiritually. Chapter 10, verse 25. We are not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but we are to encourage one another as we see the day approaching. We are to provoke one another to love and to good works, not to anger and bitterness and jealousy and strife. We're to provoke one another to love and to good works and encourage each other and not neglect the assembling of ourselves together. Chapter 10, verse 25, some people were neglecting it in the first century. Some people neglect it now. And they've always got some excuse. God knows and you know if you are neglecting the assembly of the saints. And if you are neglecting that assembly, you are neglecting your salvation. And how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Many people think little about it. It's nobody else's business. They'll do as they please. Yes, I understand that. And I understand God will be your judge. And if you're neglecting the assembling of the saints, you are neglecting your salvation. We neglect our salvation when we are not growing in faith. Hebrews 11 verse 6. Without faith it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is and that He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Then He gives us an entire example, an entire chapter of example after example after example of peoples whose faith was growing. Is your faith growing? How do you know if it's growing? Read Hebrews 11. Here's one example after another, a saving, growing faith. You neglect your salvation if your faith isn't growing. Hebrews 13, verse number 1. Hebrews 13, verse number 1. He simply says, let brotherly love continue. If you're not growing in Christian love, you're neglecting your salvation. If we miss this, we've missed it all. No matter what else, if we're at church every time the doors are open. If we don't treat each other right, I don't care how many times we come to church, how many times we take the Lord's Supper, if we don't treat each other right, if we don't talk about each other in the right way, if we're not kind, merciful, loving toward one another, we've neglected our salvation. Jesus says, this is the way people know that you're following me if you have love one to another. John 13, 35. Chapter 12, verse 2. We're running this great race called Christianity. And what's He tell us to do? Chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Every weight that so easily besets us. Anything that hinders us. And here's the image. A person running down the racetrack. they got to get rid of anything that's hindering them. And that's the way it is in Christianity. 
anything that's hindering you from being a better Christian, even if it's not wrong within itself, if it's hindering you from growing in Christ, if it's hindering you from being a better child of God, what do you tell us to do in chapter 12, verse 1? Get rid of it. Cast it aside is what the Greek means. Just cast it to the side. And then chapter 12, verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, anything that stands in the way, we get rid of it. And we look to Jesus, our faith is in Him. What is standing between you and God right now? What's standing between you and God? Another person? A family? Money? Sex? Drugs? What stands between you and your God? You need to come to God and you need to cast that aside. Believing Jesus as God's Son, turning from your sins, being immersed to have those sins forgiven, and giving Him the entire rest of your life. You can do that now.